All right, we're getting ready to hit the track, but before we do, we need to set our camber and we need to set our front toe, toe in, toe out. So we're gonna go ahead and roll through the process of that today. It's actually really straightforward, so let's get into it. All right, so I have a uh, low C camber gauge here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this car up to be negative one and a half camber on the front and the rear. And what camber is, is it's the angle of the tire, uh, either leaning in or leaning out. Uh, out is positive camber, in is negative camber. On a two-wheel drive buggy, uh, pretty much all of the race cars that we have, you're either gonna be somewhere between maybe uh, half a degree in to two degrees in, uh, somewhere in that range for the most part, but we're gonna go one and a half today. So all you do is just kind of roll your car a little bit, push the suspension, and then set that camber gauge. So I already set mine to one and a half here. There's a mark for each degree, so it's just in between one and two, uh, negative. And go ahead and set that gauge next to the wheel here. And you, you wanna see no gap either at the top or the bottom. Right now we have a little bit of gap at the bottom. So that means I need to lean the top of the tire in and I shorten this turnbuckle here to do that. Uh, the way that the turnbuckles are on all the TLR vehicles by the manual, the mark is on the left uh, side of the car. And with that mark being that way, as you turn a turnbuckle towards the front of the car, it shortens the length. As you go towards the back of the car, it expands the length. So we're gonna shorten this guy. We're, we're just gonna go a quarter turn at a time and go ahead and give it a little, little roll and line this guy up. And then I'm gonna do it again. So what I wanna do is check multiple parts around the diameter of the tire because they're not always gonna be perfectly round and you wanna get like a good average. So that quarter turn was a smidge too much. So I'm gonna go back out like an eighth turn and I think we're gonna be pretty good here. Yep, now we're gonna do the rear of the car. So we'll just turn the car around and the rear of the car, it always looks like a little bit more camber because of the toe in the rear of the car. So when it's cambered in, it looks like it's at more of an angle, but that's why you need to use a gauge because the gauge is always straight. Doesn't get skewed like our eyeballs can. And here, same thing. We want a little bit more camber, so we gotta shorten the link. So we're still gonna go from the back to the front to shorten. It just kind of looks the opposite now because of the vehicle being turned around. So that's good. Again, roll that tire a little bit, check it again. All right, good to go. All right, so now we're gonna set our front toe out. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my calipers here and I'm gonna measure the length of the two turnbuckles to make sure that they're dead even. If the turnbuckles are even and the tires are straight, then that means that the bell cranks are also straight in the middle of the car and having all of that square is important to make sure that you have the same amount of steering both to the left and to the right. Uh, so here I'm just going to measure the gap basically between the turnbuckles and it doesn't need to be exact, exact, it just needs to be really close. So I'm going to check one side and then I'm going to compare the other side and I don't even need to look at the number, I just hold the gap the same. They're like pretty much dead even so that's a good start. So. What you wanna do is you wanna look at the angle of the tires. You kinda of wanna roll the car and you want, you wanna look at it from the top down. You don't wanna look at it from the back or from the front because you get a, a skewed perspective. You also have this kingpin screw here and here on both arms and you can use that kind of as a reference for what should be parallel. When I set the front toe on a car, unless I'm specifically running an amount of toe out, which is the tires pointing out, I really want to run what I would call zero toe, but when you are running zero toe, I wanna to make sure that for sure I'm not towed in. So really my zero toe is probably just a smidge out just to make sure that I'm not in. All right, just looking at this from overhead, it looks like I might be just a smidge in right now. Uh, and so I'm gonna go, Again, it's back to front. So going this way with the wrench is gonna shorten it. And since I wanna go, since I think I might be in a little bit, I wanna shorten the length to get to that just a smidge of out. So I'm gonna 
put the wrench on there, go forward on both sides, the same amount. And what that does is if you go the same amount on both sides, it keeps those lengths even. So I'm just gonna kind of spin the tires there, roll the car a little bit, and then try and look at it from overhead again. Now to me, that looks pretty, pretty dead even. Both sides, maybe just a, yeah, I would say pretty close to dead even. I'm gonna go just a smidge out. I just want, I just want to see it out just a little bit, just to know that I don't have toe in. And yeah, definitely, I feel a little bit better there. So that's where I'm gonna start with my toe settings. All right, so we finished setting our camber and toe. You might be wondering, what exactly are these settings doing on my car when I'm out there driving? Uh, well, we'll do camber first. Camber is, like we were talking about, it's the angle of the tire leaned in. What, what camber does is as the car rolls, you'll see this outside tire start to lean towards the outside. And it's a balance of trying to maximize the tire contact patch as the car rolls and as the car is flat statically. So for example, if the car was sitting here flat, you would actually want to run a zero camber because that would keep the tire straight up and down and keep the whole width of the tire on the ground. When the car rolls though, you can see where we've rolled far enough that the tire is actually leaning out and the inside of the tire is having weight come off of it. So it's kind of a balance between the two of how much tire contact you have uh, when the car's flat and how much when it rolls. One and a half seems to be a good compromise between the two of having maximum traction in both situations. As you increase your camber, uh, especially in the rear, you're gonna increase side bite and you're gonna decrease forward bite. And as you get closer to zero, you're gonna increase forward bite and decrease side bite. Uh, same can be said for the settings for camber in the front. They're just not quite as sensitive as the rear, partly because uh, the, the kick and caster in the front end changes the dynamic of the tire contact patch. Also partly because the tire is much narrower than the rear. Okay, for the front, we have our little bit of toe out, our half degree of toe out here. And what that does is it changes how the two tires are pointed as it moves through its steering throw. So let's say if you had some toe in and you start to turn the tires. Well, as this inside tire is not even straight yet, the outside tire is already getting aggressively turned and it's gonna make the car dart into the turn really quickly. Where when we're running some toe out like we are now, what that does is as you start to turn, the inside tire is starting to turn and it's starting to kind of draw the car in. But the outside tire is still going straight and that's allowing it to kind of come in a lot more smoothly. As you run more toe in or toe out and you get further into the steering throw, it's gonna affect how the car slides each of the tires or if both of the tires are gripped up around the arc of the turn properly. As you run more toe in, it's gonna tighten how the car turns at low speed. As you run more toe out, it's gonna make it more stable when it steers at low speed. And it's also going to almost act like a little bit of a break as you get into tighter turns because if two front tires are gonna scrub against each other, slow the car down, and sometimes will actually make it feel like it has more steering because of that break. It does make the car feel more speed sensitive though, which isn't always good. So generally we run between you know, zero and maybe plus one degree of toe. That seems to be a good way to get a nice smooth initial turn in and still have good steering through the rest of the turn.